How's everybody doing today? All right, I got this came in kind of late last night. Um, this is a horn that was sent me to go through, make right, and maybe even repaint, restore. Um, from what I understand, this horn, after it had its life on the railroad, lived underneath somebody's truck. This isn't for me, I'm doing this for somebody else. Uh, here's a little telltale sign of figure out what kind of a horn it was. One hole, two hole, three hole. Alright, take a guess. I'm sure anybody that knows horns knows what would punch three holes in it like that. Alright, here we go. I'm inside today because we got 36, 37 degrees and 40 mile an hour gusts. So, that's not the greatest to work outside and I don't know if there's any styrofoam peanuts in here. And with 45, 40, 45, 35 mile an hour gusts, they be all over the neighborhood. I don't want to go chase them. Never had enough packing materials. Awful good block for the horn. so windy here, I live on Cape Cod, um, it's been so windy here, it's been unreal for the last two weeks anyway. Um, I get up this morning, uh, yesterday morning, I get up every morning between 2 and 3 o'clock, and I get up and I went and I go on over and look at the weather for here, and I looked, and it said it was like wind chill of minus 10, and I'm like, ah, that doesn't sound right, I look at my weather station, it says it's 37 degrees out. There's no way it could be minus 10. And then I looked at what they posted for a um, wind speed. And um, they had the wind speed posted at like 2,025 miles an hour. I'm like, wow! That's the highest wind speed I've ever seen. thought that was pretty amazing. I can tell you right now, this horn is in kind of tough shape. This is going to be a, an interesting um, make work, I think. Okay. Tampa RS 3L. I don't think there's anything after it. Got Tampa Chambers. One of the first things I saw when I pulled it out was we got split there. That ain't gonna come out too pure, but I'll get it. This will be good, good history. We're gonna take a pot lesson for everybody. I'm not seeing any other splits in the chambers. The bells look okay. Hang on, I'll flip it over here. There we go. 
Uh, it's just a sticker. Looking down inside, they don't look too bad, but can't go by that. A few cobwebs, a few bugs. The bells are still round. Okay. Well, that's that. Now, we get to take it apart. Okay, let's get the back cup bolts out of this. See what we got. Oh boy. Got one. Piece of the one that had the busted chamber, the busted threads. Two. Back and forth a little bit sometimes. We Definitely been under a truck, it's full, everything's full of dirt. Okay, that. Let's switch to this. Just go a little bit, don't force it. You force it, you break it. The impact, when it chatters, it works a lot better at breaking them loose without snapping things. It's the ratchet that'll do it. This chamber is the one that has the um, busted um, thread. And I get a funny feeling this bolt is going to break off. And it go back and forth a couple of times. Hopefully we got it. Success. Okay, next one. That's the key with these is just a little bit of time. Okay. That one there. Wish I could do this outside, but I don't have any um I got three sheds. And I don't have any room in any of them to work in them because I got so much junk. I gotta purge and get rid of some stuff here at some point. Okay, there's that one. Back and forth. Don't just keep forcing to loosen it. Loosen it a little, tighten a little. Oh, there's the fuser ring. Actually, the diaphragm, I don't know how the silicone is, but there's no significant wear on the diaphragm at all. And that was the 44 bell. We'll look at the, the nozzle end in a minute here. Yeah, I gotta clean out a shed to have a shop. Because I live in a place, it's not too often you got decent weather to do anything outside unless it's the dead of summer. Because naturally, the Cape Cod sticks out into the middle of the ocean. So, we get all the joys of that. Here we go.
Success. Hey, look at that. Typical Tampa chamber. Same thing. Diaphragm's not showing very much for, for wear. I'll show you how to get them out in a minute. Okay, now over to this one. 25 bell was the stubborn one. Broke two in the 25, but I think with a little bit of heat, you can see it's sticking out a little bit. Where is it? Okay, Put a little heat on them, and I can probably twist them out. Show you how to do that. That's what we got at the moment. This one here's the 25, and like I say, it's not showing a lot of wear, it's pretty clean. But like I say, this is this is life living under a truck. All right, let me grab uh, a nine sixteenths and see what we can do with the bells. I don't know if I can get them with the impact or not. I have to wash my rug when I'm done. This one's full of dirt. Okay. See what happens. I doubt this is going to work. I ain't going to get on it with that anyway. On that one. Ain't happening. This is probably going to be heat for every one of them. Alright, see what happens here. That's the hardest thing on, on these bells is getting on the bolt square. See what happens. Get out of the camera here. That ain't happening. Gonna be a lot of heat for this thing. Nope, that's it for now. I'll be back. Okay, now we're gonna try to get the diaphragms out of the back caps on RS chambers when they get corroded in. Um, I've had good luck taking. I got a pan of boiling water on the stove. And yeah, just put them in the water. Just like your high boiling eggs. Okay, we're going to give them a minute and let them boil. Soaking for about five minutes. Um, I kind of scrubbed them up a little bit while they were kind of in the pan with a toothbrush. Got most of the mud off them. Let's see what we got. I put my gloves on because I know they're hot. Is the first one. Now, what I've had pretty good luck with is you take it, and all you gotta do is go. And there's the diaphragm. This looks good. Silicone, no rips, all attached. There's the first one. You know how easy that is? Everybody tries to pick them out through the silicone and everything. Ah, not a very good idea. Alright, let's grab the next one here. Same thing, just take it, just tap it. There we go. And here's this one. The diaphragms look decent. A little corrosion. It's easy enough to clean off. Um, silicone's perfect. There's two. Oh, look at that. This one gave up the diaphragm all on its big boy self. Let's fish it out of here. Nope, ain't gonna work that way. Down the sink it goes. Muddy water.
in the same thing. Silicone's still all attached. It's perfect. Well, one good thing anyway, the diaphragm, oops, sorry, put it in the camera, the diaphragms were decent. Okay, and that's what we got for now. Next step, to heat the bolts going through the bells, through the chamber, uh, manifolds in, into the chambers to get them out. So that will be the next step. See you then. Okay, here's the next step in this this wonderful horn that lived underneath the truck. Um, I got two broken bolts in the chamber. It's easy to get them out when it's still bolted to the bell and to the manifold and trying to hold the chamber by itself. This one's going to have to go up to my buddy. We're going to have to put it on the bridge port and machine it out. It's too short to grab. This one's got plenty of meat left. I'm going to try to grab a hold of that one and pop it out. There we go. Another beautiful day on the Cape. Got some mist going on. It's about 38 degrees. Someday we might get some sun. We only average maybe two days of sun a week here. But the key to this, to warm it up without it running on the ground. You don't want to get it too hot. But I'm trying to save these chambers the best I can because they're showing no wear. Even though they're the junky Tampa ones. All three of them, the diffuser rings just fell off. That's pretty sad. And looking at the diaphragms, the diaphragms show no wear. The nozzles are hardly showing any wear. So, it's just poor quality. shot of the deep creep. Heat it up again. So far I got the 44 and the uh, 31 bells out. It took about an hour and a half to do that. But I got them. I got the 25 bell left. Both bells were frozen solid. Come on, hands! Back and forth. Real easy. A little at a time. Back and forth. Break these ears off real easy too. You don't want that to happen. It's moving. Give it a little taste of spray again. Heat it up again. Even the torch don't like the dampness. is patience. You can't rush any of it because when you rush it bad things happen. There. Look at the corrosion on that. 
But I didn't take any threads out of the aluminum, which is a good thing. Well, there's that. All right. Now we get to try to get the bolts out of there, out of the bell. Let me reposition the camera here. There, like that. I get it facing backwards. I got to climb up on the bench to see what I'm seeing. Okay, here we go. All right. I'll show you one bolt, and then after that, I'll get the other two out, and then put the camera back on. Dual torches. Give it the heat. As long as you don't see the, the paint burning off, you see the paint start to burn off, then you know you're getting close to melting the aluminum. So you kind of want to keep an eye on that, because you don't want that to happen. Because aluminum's funny, it goes from all to nothing and it runs right out on the ground. Corrosion on this on this top bolt, you can't even see the lock washers, totally encrusted it. Make sure you get up in the threads of the chamber. Warm that up too. You want to get good where it goes through the bell, because you can snap that, crack it. You don't want to do that either. The 44 bell's got a crack in it from the corrosion expander. I gotta bring that up to the welder. Getting there. I sprayed this thing twice with deep creep, let it sit. Yesterday raining today, next two days we got heavy rain coming. Again. But next state up, New Hampshire, on the weekend, we ended up, we got three feet of snow. And we ain't got no snow here this year. Kind of wish we did. One little storm and that was it. Okay. Always tighten a little bit before you loosen. They fail worse than the S horns for some reason. By a little bit, but 
Leslie horns don't they don't belong up underneath the truck. Because this is what happens. And this didn't come from Saltland where I live. I saw one a few years back, the guy wanted me to do it for him. It lived up underneath his truck and he, he lived out towards Western Mass some. And um, the thing was under his truck for over five years and went to salt. And I told him I wouldn't touch it and he wanted to know why, because I told him. From being in the salt that long and everything, and the corrosion, the aluminum, as soon as you put any heat to it, or force anything, the aluminum is just going to crumble. And it was sad, too. Because it was an aluminum tab back, S3L. And it was totally destroyed from the road salt, from being under his truck. And he asked me if I wanted to buy it. And I told him, no, nah, it's scrap aluminum. There was nothing you could do with it. It was that bad. It looked like it was on a ship for 25 years. Okay, here we go. Lord, help us out. Look at that. You can see the corrosion coming out of it as we go here. A little bit of help from above. That's where the knowledge comes from. Success! That pretty Loctite at its finest. You see the pile of corrosion that came out of there. All right, I'll be right back. All right, now let's get the 25 bell out of there. Got the chamber off, got the other two bolts out. Back to heat. Get this popped up a little bit. It stays like that. Someday I'll have a building I can work in. This will come out fairly easy, hopefully. Not like the last one that I did. Um, the end looks pretty clean. We shall see. That and I heated up all three bolts. So it's, it's warmed up pretty good already. Sprayed it with deep creep. The torch is freezing up on me here. That one's frozen. Just at that temperature. It's above freezing, but gas freezes. Get out of the way. Trust your nine one handle. We'll see what happens. Here we go.
Sit and warm that up. Let's see if I can get this one working again here. Going now. Got to thaw it out a little bit. There it goes. Frozen again. Warm one up for the other. Get up. Dead dark. Come on, quit freezing. A little heat coming out of it, not much. Perking up a little bit. This is the MAP gas, it's hotter than propane. Give it one more shot with the heat. If it don't work, I gotta go get some ice water. Dump it down the throat. And I don't know why it is, but I found that the 25 bells stick worse than the other bells. Can't, can't explain it. My driver router. Come on. That's the hardest thing is holding it when it's hot. Let's try that. Sorry for blocking the camera at the moment. go. Look at the corrosion on that bad Larry. That's why they don't like to come out. Okay. Here we go. Last thing. That. Got to get the nipple out. There's some heat there right now. Okay, let me get you in view again here. Hope I don't make you seasick moving the camera. All right. And this is pretty badly corroded. This may be a trip to the machine shop too to get this out. Because it's corroded around the edges about probably a sixteenth of an inch in. It's gonna take a minute. I'm gonna keep hitting it up. I'll be right back. Okay, I've been heating it up. I'm gonna break it loose a little. what happens here. Might have to get the big pipe wrench for this, but I don't want to snap it off in there either. Come on. Ooh. 
Oh, I gotta go get some more leverage. Be back again. All right, let's see what happens here. I got it good and hot. Give it a quick spray. Little tap on the top, break it corrosion free. See what happens. Slow as you go. Hey, we got turning. Look at that way. Don't force it all the way around. Look that way. There we go. Got it now. Success. All right, put all the stuff together and show you what we got. All right, got it all apart finally. The manifold, Oops, still warm, feels kind of good. See the plenty of corrosion inside. There's got the nipple out. You can see it, it's pretty, you can see it's all pitted and corroded around there, but there's still plenty of thread left in there. Get the 31 bell out, covered in corrosion. Forty-four bell, same thing, plenty of corrosion, and it also has this ear here. See it split, so I gotta bring that up to the welder, have them fix that. Twenty-five bell, same thing, corrosion all around. Gonna have to clean them all up. Nice. All three of the diffuser rings fell right out. Quality control. Great stuff. That's Tampa for you. The back caps. Bits of corrosion, not too bad. They're pretty clean on the inside. Just gonna clean them up a little bit. Surprisingly, the diaphragms are fine, so you can't even catch your fingernail on that. One, two, hardly anywhere whatsoever, and three. Silicone's good on all. I just got to clean a little bit of corrosion off them. And that's pretty easy. A little silicone spray and very gently takes it right off. Thousands themselves. This, I'm gonna mic them, but I think they're fine. I don't think I gotta judge them by the the wear on the diaphragms. They're good. There's one. I gotta bring this one up. Get the broken bolt out. We'll see my buddy on that. And the second one. This one's ready to go. Just gotta clean the mud off it. And this one. This one here is split. It's been split here for a very long time, and that's due to corrosion. The corrosion gets in there and it's strong. It's like ice when ice freezes, pushes it apart. But I got another housing to replace this one. All the back cap bolts. Here's the bell bolts, you know, wire wheel them all up, clean them up, but look at the amount of corrosion on these, that's why they wouldn't come out pure, some of them I had to really heat up to get out, that one wasn't too bad, and the other one, that one there's pretty, pretty chunky, so there you have it so far, that's what happens to horns that live underneath a truck, and this one wasn't in New England either. All right, I will be back probably in a couple of days to reassemble this horn and do a test to see how it sounds.
Thanks for joining me. Don't put your horn up under your truck. Be proud. Put it up on the rack behind the cab. Enjoy it. Till then, may the Lord be with you. Enjoy the day. And if anybody wants me to get their horn going again, feel free to send me an email or leave a comment in the video. And I'll be glad to take care of your horn and get it the way it should be. Make it look like it wasn't living underneath your truck anymore. Until everybody, you have a marvelous, blessed day. God bless America. Amazing how strong corrosion is. Spread that one right apart. And split this one. But, I'm going to have the welder fix it right up. That's on the 44 bell. And got the bell back from the welder. There's that one fixed. Is that one fixed? So it was pretty tough to weld because where it was so corroded, the aluminum was very porous. But come out good. Let's get it all together. Have a 44 bell back from the welder in a bit. So that's what we got. Had to place one chamber. I'm not going to bother messing around. Here's the one with the broken ear. Got a good one right here. Replace it. All the diffuser plates. They're back where they're supposed to be. All swedged in. All the corrosion's cleaned out of the caps. Diaphragms, all the corrosion's cleaned out. This one actually hasn't seen much service or anything at all, unless it had new diaphragms put in it one time, but the chambers are like new too. So we're all good. And the one that I replaced with the chamber has been remachined. The gaskets, got the bolts all cleaned up. Corrosion all off the bolts. Got my never sees ready to go. And put it together like it's going to live on a ship. And it's probably going to go back in the underneath the truck. So do what I can do to prevent new donut gaskets, new bell gaskets. So there you have it. I'll show you the 44 bell when I get it back from the welder. And
Sounds good now. There you have it. Wesley RS 3L that lived underneath a truck. Come out pretty good, I think, compared to how corrody everything was. It was a fun project. Thank you, everybody. Have a blessed day.